Ice and the Late Show with Stephen Colbert weeknights on CBS. Ooh, that feels good. A little ice on me ankle. <laughs> now it's really cold. Um, did you get a? Did you catch a little buzz tonight? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because this is the third one of these. <laughs> yeah, because I had to keep freshing it up because it wants tell. to look pretty. I can tell. Yeah. You got a little gigglier, I feel like. Yeah. Tell me the name of the drink you're drinking. Well, the drink. Here's the thing. I don't know the name of it actually. Okay. Is that this is my this is the summer this is my summertime jam. Okay. And I I'm drinking a lot of them because I'm trying to squeeze the most out of the summer that I possibly because I'm getting that I'm getting to that panicky part of the summer where I'm like oh my god yeah. I haven't had enough summer yet. Yes. So What's in I'm, the drink? Uh, this. Is Campari, Stoli orange, uh, soda water with a splash of orange juice on top. And when you first make it, it looks like a tequila sunrise. Yes. And so I didn't know the name for it. I don't have a name for it. But Anthony, one of your producers, yes. said, why don't you call it a, because it's Campari, you call it a Capri, a Capri sunset. The best title okay. ever. <laughs> Bella, have you ever made one of those? I actually have not, but I just was telling him earlier backstage that we could sell a lot of those on Fire Island. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah because as I told either. him, yes, you it is the gayest drink ever. <laughs> um, let's go back to the phone. You, you are what you eat. Yes. <laughs> Caller, what's your name and from where are you calling? Hi, my name is Corey from Queens. Hey, Corey, what's your question? First, Andy, you are my favorite. I love you. Thank you. Uh, Steven, on a scale of one to WTF, how freaked out were you when Sean Penn started smoking cigarettes on your show and said he took an Ambien before? What was the second half of that? And, and he said he took an Ambien before. Oh, I forgot about the Ambien part because I was so freaked about, about the cigarettes. Right. Uh, oh, I don't know. I wasn't actually that freaked out because I grew up with, uh, <laughs> with on... Carson and Letterman yeah, and right. everybody was always smoking. And yeah. I know that it's absolutely verboten and please don't smoke. Yeah. Um, but it just seemed perfectly normal to me. And he was smoking so much when I went to go see him downstairs because I say hi to the guests sometimes beforehand. He was just smoking like a chimney. And, and I know that he had, he had smoked in some other interview he had recently done, oh, on CBS This Morning or CBS Sunday Morning or something. I said, now, are you going to smoke on my show? And he goes, well, not if you're going to stop me. I said, you're the guest. You can do what you want. So when he smoked on the show, I said, get me an ashtray just in case he smokes. Right. But, I mean, the guest is the guest. I'm not going to stop him. Like, you want a drink? I'll get you a drink. You right. want to smoke? You smoke. What, whatever. Like, if an artist comes on to do a musical number on the show, they'll often say, like, what do you want him to play? I'm like, he's the artist. Choose what you want right. to play. So, I mean, part of Sean Penn's art is smoking. Right. <laughs> so I wasn't freaked out at all. Back oh, to I the... remember the ambient part. Yes. That made sense because he rambled. Yes. <laughs> it was but weird. I love, I love you... him. I yeah, know he's, he's kind of crazy and problematic, but, <laughs> but what would art be without crazy people? Well, that's true. Well, do you think that the society in general is just getting, uh, that everything's becoming problematic in terms of what people can say and not? I mean, I feel like. Yes, it yeah. is. But it doesn't mean that they're not that that things aren't problematic. Like mm -hmm. you know, what what's we, often things that are problematic are uh, communities have felt underrepresented, under, uh, underrepresented, <laughs> underrepresented, <laughs> or 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 told to get over their feelings. Right. But their feelings are always valid. Valid. So yes. it's who am I as straight, uh, white, Christian, male. male yeah. American, I guess, right. to go like, oh, get over yourself. Yes. So while I don't always understand the problematic nature of it, right. I always respect someone's, uh, someone's feelings about what's problematic, and I want to know what they mean. I don't always understand, you know, truthfully, yeah. but I want to know what they mean. Good answer. Uh, back to the phones. Caller, what's your name and from where are you calling? Hi, Andy. Hi, Steven. This is Janelle from Raleigh, North Carolina. Hey, hey Janelle. What's Amy Sedaris' hometown. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My question's for Stephen. Okay. Which fired politician from the White House will be the first one to do Dancing with the Stars? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> we thought it was going to be the Mooch. Uh, no, the Mooch might go back. The Mooch still talks to the president. Wow. He's still in communication. I hope it's Hope Hicks. Because I'd like to see is her it, in something glittery. Yes. You know? Isn't she yeah. too classy? What? Isn't she too classy? Is she really classy or is I she don't. just from Connecticut? Right. Age old question. Age old question. Yeah. 
Uh, back to the phones. Call her what's your name and from where are you calling? This is, I should have more good tagline. I'm from Buffalo. Uh, that, that could have been some good housewife sh shade for one of those. You're not classy. You're yeah. from Connecticut. Yeah. Yep. Uh, hey, what's your question? Hi, um, this is Alexa from Buffalo. Um, first of all, Stephen, I think you're absolutely hilarious, and I love you. You're genius. I agree. And Andy, I love you too. I watch you all the time. <laughs> I watch you all the time. Thanks. Um, so my question for you is, what was your best memory of your time at Second City? Uh, my best memory of the time at Second City was any time uh, in the improvisational scene uh, went uh, so well that you had no sense of who was leading. Right. You know, um, my, my, my best friends that I made there were Amy Sedaris and Paul Dinello, who were hired on the same day, along with Chris Farley. We, were all, we all traveled around together. And that was, that was an amazing I didn't know Farley memory. was in your class. Farley and I traveled around the road for about six months together before he actually got hired quickly and then went off to SNL. But Farley was, um, he was really joyful. What people don't know, he was really smart. He wasn't actually like the right. sort of the, the bumbling dolt that he played. Right. He was a smart, really, a man filled with an enormous heart. Um, but the actual memories of the moments are when you do an improv scene and you didn't know whose idea it was at, at the end of it. Right. We did a scene once called Maya where I was uh, a guy who took Steve Carell back to my hometown and, and in the South. And in the scene, it was all thoroughly improvised, uh, entire cast scene, which is very hard to do for everybody to improvise. And in my hometown, we established through the improv that when I'm home, I'm not like a 28-year-old white man. I'm actually an old black woman. Okay. And I changed nothing about my performance, but everybody spoke to me and called me Shirley Wentworth. <laughs> and, and, and then at the end of it, Carell was also an old black woman, and we sang spirituals together. <laughs> and it was the strangest, most surreal scene that I ever did that I could never explain how it came about. Right. And it was maybe the most beautiful thing I ever did on stage. Wow. And, um, uh... It's the only time we ever did a whole improv scene where after it was over, we didn't change a single word. We just put it into the show. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Because I was obsessed with Maya Angelou at the time because she had just done President Clinton's, yes. uh, the, the, the occasional the poem for his inauguration, yes, like We amazing. Rise. Yeah. And I was also obsessed with Sweet Honey in the Rock, which is the great North Car Wilmington, North Carolina um, uh, gospel a cappella group. Yeah. And I was also obsessed with how when I'm home in South Carolina, I'm a different person. And that I, I speak differently, I act differently, people treat me differently. Yeah. And uh, my director at the time said, see if you can find a way to put all three of those together. Wow. And that was the scene. And so that was probably the peak for me there, that, that one scene. That's amazing. Uh, back to the phones. I think we have last call of the night. Caller, what's your name and from where are you calling? Hi, this is Meredith from Columbus, Ohio. Hey, Meredith, what's your question? I have a question for Stephen, obviously. As someone who knows her well, what are the craziest and then the most normal things about Amy Sedaris? Um, uh, uh, the, well, that's the craziest. Uh, uh, she, the craziest thing about Amy Sedaris is that you could be writing a scene with her because for years, um, Paul Donnell and I, who were writing partners for, he still works on my show, but we were yeah. really writing partners for 15 years, and we wrote a lot for Amy, and it was an honor to be, to, to work in service to her, because yeah. she's such an amazing character actress, yep. is that she would seem like she wasn't paying attention at all. It would be like 4 o'clock in the morning, we'd be writing, she'd be in the corner frosting cupcakes, yeah. or making <laughs> candy skulls out of sugar, or something yep. like that, because she was always baking, yep. and then she, we would, we wouldn't know what how the scene was supposed to go, and she would say, "Well, what? Uh, well, what if? Uh, what if they followed a squirrel into the forest?" And then we would say, "What? What was that? What was that?" And she's like, "What did I say?" <laughs> and whatever she said was the answer, but, and I mean this as a compliment, kind of like an idiot savant. She did not know that she had absorbed every problem in the script and come up with the answer wow. with no effort, and it would kind of infuriate us because we were chopping Churning, wood for yeah. hours trying yeah. to come up with the answer, and it would come out of her like breathing. That's and the most normal thing about Amy was... Um, uh, she's, very, she's very loving and giving, and... Um, and she, she's very kind, and she loves to make you feel better with food. Yes, she does. Yeah. She's great. Um, and you're great, and thank you for indulging us tonight. We oh, love thank you having, having you. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Everybody watch the Late Show.
show with Stephen Colbert, weeknights on CBS. You can catch Philip uh, right there.